In this video, I'm going to compare a RAV Power Ace Series RP PV60 battery pack to an Anchor Astro E1 model A1211. We're going to take these units apart, take a look at the build quality, and uh, do a full charge and discharge and time the actual performance. Coming right up on Tech Talk. So, what we have here is a RAV Power Ace Series external battery pack. We're going to tear this one down and we're going to uh, put it through its paces and take a look at the build quality of this little unit here. So we open up the box. What we're interested in is this little unit itself. So there's the power button on the side which also checks your battery level. So here's our discharge schematic. Haven't drawn the cells in here but uh, this is our battery pack, our USB connector. We've got a it's split, positive and negative. One side's running through the ammeter. We've got a voltmeter across here as well. And we're running through a resistive load. Two resistors in parallel, a one ohm resistor and a 4.7 ohm resistor. And that, when you factor in the losses in the jumper wires, it's gonna give us just under two amps, about 1.98, 1.97 amps of current. That is uh, what we are going to discharge with. We can now monitor the current and monitor the voltage and with our temperature probe we can monitor the cell temperature or any of the other components in the buck converter. I think the best way to open this is probably going to be the way I've done it before. Just side cutters into the corner. Ah, there we go. There, it's opening up. There. It's just, it's just held together with little clips, little pop, little um, plastic clips. So once we spring them open, we should be able to pop this thing right apart. There we have it. There we have the unit apart. So now we can look at this thing while I'm continuing to discharge it. Uh, what I do like is it is cylindrical cells. So um, it's not the, 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 the lithium polymer um, cells are the ones that really um, get me nervous because if they're, damaged if they're crushed or uh, you know if they're you poke them with something well you'll, you'll have a, a little bit of a meltdown our battery cell temperature is 27 degrees Celsius 27.5 cells look to be LG they're LG GPF 1 L 1865 and then the other number on these is P34 or yeah, P348L133N. So what I'm gonna do when it comes time to charge the battery, and I'm, this is the temperature of the cells. I've got my temperature sensor, as you can see, just sitting underneath the cells here. It's 25.6, 26 degrees. Once the battery runs down, I have a two and a half amp USB charger that I'm going to plug in. And what we'll do is we'll disconnect the cells here from the charging board so that I can put the meters on and we'll actually measure the current that's going into the cells. I measure the voltage that the cells are being charged at and we'll monitor the temperature while this is charging up and that should complete our, our little test here of this unit. For charging, slightly different configuration. This time I hooked the ammeter up between the negative terminal of the uh, charge controller and the negative terminal of the battery and, and uh, measure the current that's actually charging the two cells. And we also monitor the voltage. Okay, let's uh, connect this up here. We'll see that the charging voltage is 3.2 and it's charging at 0.8 amps or 800 milliamp. And now we'll just let this thing charge. Okay, about one hour into the charge, our charging voltage is now 3.459 and our charge current has dropped down to uh, 0.59, so 590 milliamps, 0.59 of an amp. Our cell temperature has dropped to 23.2 degrees Celsius. It's been about three and a half hours on charge now. As you can see, the cell temperature has now risen to 20.1 degrees, and the cells are probably getting close to being fully charged. We're at 3.659 volts, and the current is now 430 milliamps to charge. So the cells are probably getting close to being fully charged. So at this point, I'm just gonna leave the camera recording this and we'll time lapse this just so that we get the, the full shutdown on, on camera.
Now it was about uh, 2.20 when I first started this test. As you can see, we're I'm at the shutdown point. It is now 15.48, and this is under full load. It's down to 1.96 uh, amp. There it goes. That's it. That's it. Complete discharge. Cell voltage down to 3.08 volts. The unit is completely shut down now. Now we're going to do the same test with the Anchor brand of uh, battery backup. But what I found with the anchor is it's only rated at 2 amps. So we're going to redo this test when I finish that one and give it a fair timed discharge under the same load, which is going to be about 1.9 amps. So this one's the anchor Astro E1. It's a model is A1211. And it's a 2 amp output. It's rated at uh, 5200 milliamp hours or 19.2. 0.24 uh, watt hours whereas the RAV power that we just looked at was rated at 6700 milliamp hours or 24.79 uh, watt hours it's not fully charged we'll charge it <laughs> and then we'll do the test the tried and true method let's see whether we can pry this thing open there we go okay let's take a look at what's inside this thing So here are our two cells, our two cells in parallel. Here's the strip going up to the board. Here's our little board here. It's got one little capacitor on here, a couple of ICs. You're going to have the, uh, I'm sure these are probably the battery protection, 2418E. And as you can see, one light's flashing because the battery is the battery is totally dead. So what I want to do is I want to check the uh, charge current on this thing. So we'll do that by unsoldering one of the tabs here so that we can uh, hook up the meter to it. Okay, we're charging at 4.18 volts. We're charging at, uh, looks like half an amp, just over half an amp, 550 milliamps is what uh, it is charging at. And the only thing left to connect is the temperature monitor. We're just going to take the temperature probe here and I'll just slide it in here to the under the, between the cells. And that way we can monitor the cell temperature. And we're going to let this uh, charge up and see how long it takes to charge and monitor the cell temperature while we're doing it. The uh, cells are now fully charged. And as you can see, the, the uh, current is down to 180 milliamps. So we're now at a full charge. I'm going to unplug this thing now. And uh, now we can go into the discharge cycle. So we're going to leave that going. And we're going to let this run. And uh, we'll monitor the cell temperature, which has now gone up to 28 degrees. The cells are starting to heat up. My output voltage is still 4.7 volts, but my cell voltage is down to 3.46. So the cells are discharging quite nicely here. <laughs> I just witnessed it go off. One hour and seven minutes. The voltage just the cell voltage just dropped down, and we saw the the temperature rise on the battery. That's it. That's all this one does. Let's hook up the uh, Rav power to the same jig, and we'll run that and see how long it goes, and I'll reset the time. We're just going to plug this one in, and we're going to start the time clock running again here. We're drawing 1.93 amps, and we're going to let this one run until it drops. Well, that's it. It just shut down. Two hours and three minutes running the identical discharge setup that we used on the Anchor, which only ran for one hour and seven minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll uh, catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.